Hi, I'm Stacy, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today we're going to be talking about test benches in the FPGA and specifically how do I make a test bench? How do I make a clock and make a reset and save my signals to file? How do I build the little infrastructure around my top level code to be able to simulate it? This is what I'm going to be looking at today. So I have my pause and window project here. Before I dive into how I show you my pause and window, I'm going to dive into the test bench for it. When I'm putting my design in hardware, I have a clock and reset and pins that are on the board that are physically connected to the FPGA board. But when I'm using my test bench, instead of having these pins be connected to the board, in simulation, I have to drive the clock and the reset in order to reproduce what would be happening on the board. So it's like its own little bubble where you drive the clock and the reset and then you see that it does what it's supposed to do. That's why my test bench doesn't have any top level signals. So these are the parameters I'm going to be using for my test bench and my clock and my reset. So I have given my clock an initial value and my reset an initial value. And I also, in addition to my output signals, I also have the clock period is 50 megahertz. And my reset count is how many clock cycles of reset do I have before I come out of reset. To generate the clock, I have a special always block. So this doesn't have an always at star. So this is non-synthesizable. This won't work with synthesis. In this case, I just have always begin and that will just mean it'll always run this. The hash sign here is a time period. Clock will be driven by not clock after a specific time period. So in this case, this is clock period divided by two. So it will invert the clock every half clock period, which is what we want because we want the clock to toggle up and down and up and down. Hash symbol is specifically for simulation. It won't work in synthesis because the FPGA, apart from the clock, the FPGA doesn't have any kind of internal mechanism by which it can measure time. The clock is the only sense of time that the FPGA has. And even then the clock is just a clock edge. So it's impossible in hardware for you to be able to say after a specific amount of time, after five nanoseconds or whatever, do this. But because we're in simulation, we're allowed to do this. So anytime you see anyone using hash or weight or any kind of time construct in their code, it's not synthesizable. It's only simulation code. Then in my in reset, I have my initial begin. So in the always begin in simulation, the code will run, run and run and run at circles. It will just go on forever. It will just do it forever. Initial begin will only run once and then it will stop. So initially my reset is high. And then after I wait, because we've got a hash, clock count times clock period. So I will wait for a specific amount of time. And then I will wait for my clock. So at pause edge clock means after I've waited for the clock count and the clock period, I will then wait for my clock to go high. Because this is an initial block in simulation, it will stop here. And so my reset will remain low for the rest of the simulation. And so that is how I generate my clock and reset signals. The next up is this guy, which is my unit under test. Um, I've just called it parsing because that's what it is. Sometimes people use UUT, or unit under test. And then the other thing I would like to go through, oh boy. I just knocked the tripod. Okay, where was I? So the next thing I want to show you is I want to show you how I write to files. So once I have generated my output signals from my unit under test, which in this case is my window, I want to store them in a file so that I can see them. Maybe I want to put them in MATLAB or Python or Octave or pick your analysis tool of choice. You can write to file. So I'm going to show you what my file writing module looks like. Again, in this module, I am using constructs that are simulation only. The file open file write command are simulation only. When you see in system Verilog a dollar sign command, some of them are synthesis and some of them are simulation. So I, I would always double check. If you do using a dollar sign command in simulation in, in system Verilog and you want to try and use it in synthesis, Google it first to check. 
There are a handful that will work in synthesis, but there are others that won't. So it you can't assume. So I've got my input data. And in this case, I am working with fixed point data. I can specify the data length and the fractional length. I will be going through the fixed point stuff in another video. Then FD is the file descriptor object. I'm opening the file to write to it. And so the file name is there. And this initial block, exactly like we saw in the initial begin end in our test bench, initially means it happens once. So I am initially opening the file at the start of my simulation and then I'm not running it again. I don't need to run it again. I've got my file open already. So then I create a real signal and then I drive the internal real signal with the input data. And that's just because I'm going to be doing a divide in the next step. I'm going to be doing a floating point divide, which is a simulation only construct. And I need to cast the input data to float in order for the tool to detect that I'm doing a float divide. If I didn't cast my input data to a float, then it would do an integer divide. So then I do my divide where I divide my input data by two to my fractional width. And I do that by just shifting one up by the number of bits. And that allows me to convert my fixed point signal to a floating point signal. So that when I put it in MATLAB or whatever, I can see the number as a floating point value. But in the FPGA, it's fixed point at whatever the fractional width is. And I'll be talking about the fixed point numbers and the rules associated with fixed point in another video. But for now, what you can just imagine is that all the numbers are scaled by a power of two. If you have a range from zero to one and it's a 10 bit fractional in the FPGA, you work with numbers from zero to one or two, four. You've got to maintain the fractional bits. There are rules associated with it. But on the output, when you're done processing the number and it's still a 10 bit fractional, then when it comes out the other side, you divide by two to the 10 and then it will put it back into its normal floating point range. And so at the very basic level, fixed point is just multiplying before you put it in the FPGA, then you shove it in the FPGA and you process it with rules. And then on the output, you just divide it again. And that is the way fixed point works on the very basic level. And then my write statement, this is a F write, and I write to the file of the floating point value of whatever write data is. And I only write when I'm not in reset and when the data is valid. This is how you write to file. And that's my test bench. And, and then I just initiate this module here. And then I have my file name there. And, and that's it. That's my test bench. And so this way I can create a clock and a reset signal. And then on the output, you can save your signal values to file in order to look at them or work with them in some way. And so, and that's that. A couple of housekeeping things. I have a subreddit. A lot of people are on Reddit from my viewer user base, apparently. And so I have a subreddit and that's probably where I'm going to post the majority of stuff like video updates and polls and suggestions if you want to suggest something. So that's probably where I'm going to be interacting with people the most. I'm also on Discord and I, and that's it. I appreciate you. I hope that this was helpful for you. If you want to let me know, if you want to give me a suggestion, you're welcome to give me a suggestion in the comments or in my Google form or in the subreddit. And I will add them to my list because I'm always interested to see what questions people have. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.